Delta Foxtrot, thank you for a $10 super chat. I bought a long range antenna for my iFlight and the SMA connector is male and the one on the quad is male. Am I able to take out the male prongs? Will it work? No, 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 no. No, it will not work. Do not do that. Do not do that. You will break it. You bought the wrong antenna. That's all. Hang on. You could buy an adapter. It's okay. It's going to be okay. It's not male versus female. It's SMA versus RPSMA. You just bought the wrong one. So you bought an SMA antenna. And you have an RPSMA video transmitter. And they won't go together. You either need an SMA to RPSMA adapter or you need to buy a different antenna. So there you go. Okay. Do not just pull that out. It will not work correctly. It doesn't it doesn't work like that. One IFPV says, isn't there a standard that says antennas should be RPSMA versus SMA? One IFPV, there, there isn't a universal standard for that. Um, it, it, a lot of people feel that the video transmitter should be the, that RPSMA is better because it puts the pin on the video transmitter and the uh, receptacle on the antenna. And the reason that's better is that when the RPSMA connector wears out, this connector here is kind of spring-loaded, if you will. And it when, when the RPSMA connector wears out, oftentimes it's this little bit here that wears out or this little bit here. And the idea is that if you put the pin on the video transmitter, then eventually the antenna will wear out and you can replace the antenna. But if you put SMA connectors, then the video transmitter has the receptacle and when it wears out, you have to replace the video transmitter, which is more expensive. So a lot of people feel that RPSMA is superior for that reason. I think RPSMA is superior because if you have an SMA video transmitter, and you buy an RPSMA antenna by accident, they will screw together. And you'll be missing the pin and you will get terrible, terrible range. But they'll screw together and you won't know. RPSMA, you cannot accidentally screw an SMA antenna on because they both have a pin and it won't work. Brian Malin uh, says, for Express LRS, we try to get all transmitters to be RPSMA because all 2.4 gig stuff should be RPSMA as the standard. SMA for 5.8 gigahertz. Uh, Bri, uh, Captain Bry, I, I, I respect your, your knowledge uh, and I respect your contribution. Uh, but I, so I would ask, where is that standard defined? Who made that standard up? Uh, I have never heard of that before, that 2.4 gig is RP and SMA and 5.8 is SMA. Uh, there's no technical reason why the SMA connector is more suited for 2.4 or 5.8. They can both do both. And um, SMA was the standard connector. And uh, then the FCC said that for Part 15 certification, you have to have a non-standard connector. And so the story I've always been told, and which I believe is true until somebody tells me different, is that the point of RPSMA was to create a quote-unquote non-standard connector for FCC Part 15 certification. Um, right. Captain Bryce says, Wi-Fi manufacturers used it to skirt the FCC's regulation. They, were not skirt, they weren't skirting the regulation. They were complying with it. Okay? So, like, people always say, oh, you're skirting the law. If the law says I can have window tint up to whatever, 5% on my windows, and my window tint is 4% or 5%, I'm not skirting the law, I'm complying with it. And in this case, the FCC said, 
that for Part 15 certification, you have to have a non-standard antenna connector that, that, to make it harder for people to change the antennas. And RPSMA was created with, that, with compliance with that regulation in mind. And that's why Wi-Fi devices with removable antennas come with RPSMA. Now, it turns out that now that we have the internet, RPSMA is also widely available. And who knows if they think that that's still true. But there's no... The only reason that Part 15 devices usually come with RPSMA is to comply with that FCC guideline. However, I, I don't know if the FCC still thinks that RPSMA is not widely available. I mean, it's pretty widely available. Um, but as far as 5.8 or 2.4, as long as it's Part 15 certified, I, my understanding is that it should be RPSMA or some other non-standard, not widely available connector. Um, anybody shipping a Part 15 device with an SMA? Well, nobody nobody should be able to ship a Part 15 device with an SMA connector. That's a fact. And the FCC would not certify a Part 15 device with an SMA connector uh, unless the their interpretation of the law has changed in a way that I don't uh, know about. Now, what I don't know is whether the, F the FCC has cottoned on to the fact that RPSMA is also widely available and they have said that Part 15 devices must have like directly connected. I think that they changed the interpretation a little while back and they said that Part 15 devices must have like a tamper resistant antenna. And that's why TBS started gluing their antennas on. Um, I would then again. Well, interesting. The DJI Goggles 2 have removable antennas that are RPSMA, but the new DJI Goggles have non-removable antennas. I think, the, I think I remember that the FCC changed their interpretation because they got tired of people having removable antennas with these quote-unquote non-standard connectors that aren't actually non-standard. Um... Yeah, the Crossfire module now has a little plastic shroud that you have to take the screws out to unplug it. Ooh, there you go. Tamper resistant. 